Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue my little mini-series on the world's most mysterious places. So I last read to you a magazine called The World's Most Mysterious Places, and this one is different. So let's dive right in and start with the first chapter. I think we'll just do that tonight. So the first chapter here is Ancient Enigmas. Explore mystical places and lost civilizations. Ancient Enigmas. Is that a great picture of the, the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx? That's awesome. But we're starting off in Cambodia with Angkor Wat, which you can see on the cover here. Angkor Wat in Cambodia. There we go. Let's read along, it says. One of the world's largest and most elaborate religious monuments, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, spans more than 500 acres with a 213-foot central peak-like tower, several smaller towers, and a 13-foot deep moat where the ghosts of Khmer warriors sound their ominous warnings, protect this sacred place. Built in the early 12th century by Khmer king Suyavarman II, who, legend has it, murdered his great-uncle while he rode an elephant to rise to power, the temple, which may have served as an elaborate ancient calendar, was dedicated to the deity Vishnu. It's elaborately decorated with bas-reliefs of supernatural battles. The most famous carving is the 160-foot-long churning of the sea milk, featuring demons and gods who stir the waters into a frenzied boil and use a five-headed snake as a rope. The wall aligns with the sun and moon and signals the solstices, while the entire temple lines up with the dragon constellation in the northern sky. Inside, virtually every surface is carved with ornate images of gods, mythological scenes, and dancers. By the early 15th century, Angkor Wat was abandoned and swallowed by the jungle, its demise the subject of debate for decades, earning it the name Lost City by Westerners, though locals always knew it was there. Next, we have the Karnak Stones of France. This is called Dolmen right here. In northwest of France, thousands of hand-hewn stones as tall as 12 feet stand in precise military formation, which is perhaps why local legend has them as Roman troops turned to stone by the wizard Merlin, or maybe, in another telling, by St. Cornelius, the local saint. In fact, the Karnak stones that cover the Brittany countryside, the largest concentration of prehistoric megaliths or stone monuments in the world, go back far beyond Arthurian tales and Christianity to 4,500 BCE when they were first carved out of local rock by Neolithic peoples for reasons still debated. Totally more than 3,000, the stones formed circle patterns or rows while some were used to make dolmens or tombs. There are four separate alignments across almost 100 acres, featuring rows of stones set in arrangements of 1 to 13 lines. They may have been ancient observatories like Stonehenge, maps of the stars, or guides to sunsets and solstices. It's estimated that it would have taken at least a million years worth of manpower to create, and some have suggested the stones are a passage leading to a gateway between two worlds. And next is... Extersteine in Germany. Look at it. That's so cool. Here. There. Jutting out of the Teutoburg forest in Germany, like rocky pillars, these five towering sandstone rock formations captivate the imaginations of modern-day pagans who believe the Earth's energy streams out of holes drilled in the rocks. There. On Walpurgis night, the night of the witches in the spring or during the summer solstice, the believers are drawn by the strange aura and ragged beauty of Extersteine, feeling a connection that goes back 10,000 years when the first nomadic people gathered here, leaving stone tools, arrowheads, and fire pits. A hole above one stone faces towards sunrise during the summer solstice, one of several signs of astrological uses. But theories that Germanic pagans worshipped amid the boulders have been largely dismissed, as have stories the sacred pillar known as Ermensul was located here until it was destroyed by the Roman Emperor Charlemagne. 
8th century monks carved out stairs and made religious-themed etchings at the site. Centuries later came the Nazis, who saw Extersteine not as a holy place but as a propaganda tool, with the head of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, concocting a German origin story around the site that was largely fake. Really beautiful, though. It is very mysterious looking. And we have Easter Island in Polynesia. We talked about these in the last one, or the last magazine, I should say, but it's still really interesting. The moment British Captain James Cook saw the monstrous statues of Easter Island, he struggled. He wrote with a perplexing question, how these islanders, wholly unacquainted with any mechanical power, could raise such stupendous figures. That was 1774, and ever since, nearly everything about this tiny wind-whipped speck in the middle of the Pacific Ocean has stupefied, with questions of how and why the people came to the land they'd call Rapa Nui, how and why they made and moved these rocky behemoths, and how and why it all came to a sudden and dramatic halt with hundreds of statues left lying around. It's believed that sometime around 1200 CE, Polynesians paddled to this island 2,000 miles away from the coast of Chile and founded a thriving community. At some point, they went to work on the statues known as Moai. They used solidified volcanic ash, nearly all of it from a single quarry, shaped by chisels made of basalt into figures with pouting thin lips, elongated ears, big noses, square jaws, and heavy eyebrow ridges. Teams of a half-dozen men labored for a year to complete each moai. Another two hundred transported these giants, the largest at thirty feet and weighed more than eighty tons to the resting sites. But how did they do it with no modern tools or machines? The locals believe in mana, the supernatural power contained in all people, most powerfully the priests, who legend has it, assisted the Moai to walk under their own power. Once in place, the Moai stared across the island for hundreds of years, each believed to honor ancestors or the heads of different lineages. Then something very bad and perhaps quite sudden happened. Production stopped. Only a quarter of the Moai were ever erected, the rest left in a quarry or strewn about. This much more is known. The ecology on this already fragile 7 by 14 mile island degraded due to deforestation and erosion. Hungry rats, probably stowaways aboard early European ships in the 1700s, gobbled up precious vegetation. The population plummeted from 15,000 to 3,000. Social upheaval followed. Peruvian slave traders, smallpox, and tuberculosis were the final blows. Today, the 5,500 residents struggle with the bad side effects of tourism and of a drought caused by climate change that threatens to dry up the island's water. It's enough to make the Moai weep, but they remain steadfastly stoic and fascinating. Next we have Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Turkish for Potbelly Hill. There it is. Turkish for Potbelly Hill. Gobekli Tepe in southern Turkey looked for millennia like a giant mound, until archaeologists in the early 1990s unearthed something amazing and unexplainable. Dozens of T-shaped megaliths inscribed with strange images of snakes, lions, and spiders. The pillars themselves appear human-shaped with oblong heads, with the tallest measuring 16 feet in height and weighing between 7 to 10 tons. What makes this find so remarkable is that it dates back at least 12,000 years before Stonehenge, before even pottery or the invention of the wheel, which means the stones were hewn, erected, and engraved by a prehistoric people who were supposed to have been nomadic hunter-gatherers, lacking such sophistication and organization. More mysterious is why, suddenly, around 8000 BCE, it was all buried and abandoned. Some say this can be explained if Gobekli Tepe was actually the temple of the Garden of Eden. As the once wandering people came here to worship over thousands of years, they needed a centralized food source, thus agriculture began with crops and farm animals first domesticated nearby. The fall from Eden then marked man's descent from the leisurely life of gathering to the toil of agriculture. Paradise was lost, and so was Gobekli Tepe. 
Next is the very famous Lascaux Cave in France. They are beautiful. I love this though. Lascaux Cave. Discovered by a local teenager in 1940 when his dog fell in a hole in the ground, the Lascaux Cave of southwestern France features masterpieces of prehistoric art. Thousands of animals, humans, and geometric shapes painted in yellow, red, and black pigments. But could it also show something more ethereal? One theory suggests some paintings, horses, stags, cats, a bear, a buffalo, the auroch, the buffalo-like auroch, rhinoceros, a bird, a human, may represent the stars and the constellations that people looked up to 17,000 years ago. And then there's the biggest curiosity painting of a creature that resembles a unicorn. So much of this gallery is shrouded in mystery that scientists still don't know whether the paintings were done at the same time or over the millennia, if the artists were men, women, children, or some combination, or even why the images were painted at all. Did they celebrate hunts, represent some sort of worship, or serve merely as a creative outlet? Whatever the answer, it was all done with great care. The paint was applied with fingers, dabbed on with some sort of utensil, even sprayed through a tube on the cave walls and ceiling. In one chamber, thousands of images cover a ceiling of nearly nine feet. The height, along with man-made holes in the walls, suggests the artist built scaffolds to realize their vision. That's so amazing. Nowadays, because they're afraid of like people touching it in tourists, it's closed off completely. And there's like a big recreation of it that you can walk through and see. Here's one of my favorites, Machu Picchu in Peru. So gorgeous. It's like top three bucket list for me. As Yale historian Hiram Bingham hacked through the snake-infested jungles in the mountains of southern Peru in 1911, he stumbled upon one of the greatest wonders of the world the remains of the sacred Incan citadel of Machu Picchu. Constructed in the 15th century by master stonemasons without the use of mortar, the complex of palaces, temples, and storehouses perched 7,970 feet above sea level has both fascinated and perplexed scientists since it was unveiled in the April 1913 issue of National Geographic. The mystery then as now is why was it created? Local legends tell of the Intihuatana stone at the pinnacle of the site, offering passage into the spirit world with a single touch to the forehead. Certainly, the stone seems to help track the equinoxes, while other buildings are temples to the moon and sun. Right around 1450, during the reign of Emperor Pachacuti, who, like all great Incan rulers, was looked upon as a god descended from the sun, Machu Picchu lasted only 80 years as a royal country retreat before it was abandoned as smallpox decimated the region's population during the Spanish conquest. To hide the city from marauding conquistadors, Incans burned away the surrounding forest so new growth would obscure the trails and consume the structures. It wouldn't be found by Bingham until nearly five centuries later. We got some mini little topics here fascinating collection of mystical, magical objects. First is the Shroud of Turin. No textile has generated more fevered interest and controversy than this 14.5 by 3.5 foot piece of linen believed by many to have shrouded Jesus for his burial after his crucifixion. Bearing the image of a tall, muscular, bearded man with shoulder-length hair, the shroud has been stored in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, since 1578. Radiocarbon dating and forensic analysis have cast doubt that the shroud wrapped Christ or anybody else. Next is the crystal skulls. In the late 1800s, private collectors obtained about a dozen skulls of clear or milky quartz similar to the one Harrison Ford would sneak in the 2008 film Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Some believe they were created by Mesoamericans tens of thousands of years ago. Others claim they were delivered to Earth by aliens. And there are those who believe the skulls possess powers to heal or turn people into psychics. Next is the Antikythera Mechanism. 
More than 100 years ago, sponge divers retrieved corroded green chunks of bronze from a 2,000-year-old shipwreck off the Greek island Antikythera. Researchers have discovered that these were the mechanisms of a startlingly advanced device that could predict the positions of the sun, stars, and five visible planets and moon, making this the first analog computer. It even had instructions inscribed on the back in ancient Greek. Next is the Hope Diamond. Has there ever been a more deadly jewel? This 45.52 carat deep blue diamond, the largest of its kind, was mined in India and first cut for France's King Louis XIV in 1668, and then passed through many privileged hands. Valued at more than 350 million US dollars, the diamond is said to be followed by a curse based on tales of its many owners suffering mob attack, beheading, starvation, financial and marital misfortune, or dying by suicide. Its current owner, the Smithsonian Institution, says it's brought nothing but good luck in the form of record numbers of visitors to the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. Next is the Xiangheng Seismoscope. The ultimate multi-hyphenate. Xiangheng was an engineer, artist, poet, writer, mathematician, mathematician, geographer, and astronomer in China during the Han Dynasty nearly 2,000 years ago. But it was his work as an inventor that most stands out. In the year 132, he created a complicated metal urn-shaped device with a crank, pendulum, sling, and ball that was said by ancient texts to be capable of detecting earthquakes hundreds of miles away. Although modern scientists have struggled to replicate the seismoscope, the principles of its design are applied today. Next is the Iron Pillar of Delhi. Still standing in India, this 13,000-pound metal rod crafted about 1,600 years ago has fascinated science due to its ability to resist rust. Writer Eric von Donkin jumped on this fact to suggest in his cult bestseller, Chariots of the Gods, that ancient extraterrestrial visitors passed on the secrets to forging it. But in reality, the process has been credited to the great skill of Indian metallurgists. Next is Sancta Camicia. The Veil of the Virgin, Sancta Camicia, is a rectangular piece of silk that Mary was said to have worn during her labor and delivery of Jesus. It was believed to have been given to Chartres Cathedral in France in 876 by King Charles the Bald, whose grandfather Charlemagne had been given it as a gift from the Byzantine Empress. The fabric, which is stored in a reliquary box, has been carbon dated to the first century. Ooh. Next are the Nazca Lines in Peru. Etched, <clears throat> etched into the iron-rich red dirt of a coastal plain in southern Peru, these 2,000-year-old geoglyphs of a lizard, frog, condor, spider, monkey, and hummingbird, and even a figure some say resembles an astronaut, have baffled scientists and sent alien visitor theorists into a speculative tizzy for decades. Were these primitive tool etchings made less than a foot deep intended as a sort of ancient guide to the stars and planets? Were they drawn to appeal to the gods to bring water to this arid land? Or created as a huge calendar? The most outrageous theory, the lines guide alien spaceships, making this the world's first airport. Spanning up to three quarters of a mile, the designs are all the more impressive when viewed from high above the Nazca Desert raising questions of exactly how these decidedly earthbound ancient artists pulled off this feat and whom or what they were trying to impress. The monkey isn't on here, that one's my favorite, followed by the spider. The spider's really cool. Next we have Petra in Jordan. So beautiful. There we go. The first glimpse is breathtaking. Visitors to Petra walk through a steep, nearly mile-long gorge decorated with larger-than-life carvings until they get to a dark, ten-foot-wide split in the sandstone that reveals the most elaborate ruin in this fantastic city of rock, called al Khazna or the Treasury, because early Bedouins thought it held riches. It's one of the most incredible monuments of the ancient world. 
the towering facade of this first century CE mausoleum, a dramatic mashup of Greek Corinthian columns, an Egyptian goddess, women warriors, winged victories, and a dozen Amazons with axes, isn't so much carved in the sandstone as bursts out of it. Tucked deep in the desert canyons of southern Jordan, Petra was settled as early as 9000 BCE and grew into a trading center for the nomadic Arabs called the Nabataeans, who also built huge block-shaped tombs known as jinn blocks, which take their name from the spirits of Arabic folklore. About 2,000 years ago, Petra had a peak population of 30,000 people, sustained in the dry months by an advanced water system of pipes, canals, and cisterns. For a time under Roman rule after the year 106, Petra became even grander until Palmyra in modern-day Syria siphoned trade away and an earthquake devastated the city. Petra was forgotten to outsiders until its rediscovery by 19th century adventurers. Now one of the seven new wonders of the world, Petra draws so many visitors, over 1.1 million in 2019 despite the region's political instability, that its famous ruins are at risk of destruction. Tourists who touch or lean on the ancient walls combined with human foot traffic and the hard hooves of donkeys and camels are accelerating the natural erosion of the sandstone. Just a quick note, if you hear any kind of like scratchy weird sounds in the background, that's the possum that lives in the walls of my bathroom. But anyway, the Great Pyramid of Giza, here's that great picture again. It's difficult to dismiss pyramid power as new age nuttiness when no less of an authority than the Journal of Applied Physics published a study in 2018 claiming that the Great Pyramid of Giza can focus electromagnetic energy through its chambers. This recent disclosure has practical implications. It can help scientists discover new ways to make better solar cells, and only fuels the beliefs that there are ancient mystical powers trapped deep in this Egyptian marvel. Some 4,500 years after the pyramid was completed as a tomb for the fourth dynasty pharaoh Khufu, this oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world continues to bewitch, with the notion of many mysteries still to be revealed. The largest of three pyramids in the Giza complex, the Great Pyramid, stands 481 feet tall and held the title for 3,800 years as the tallest structure made by man. It took as many as 100,000 men up to two decades to quarry, shape, haul, and assemble more than two million blocks, then cover it all with limestone to give it a smooth finish that has since eroded. Once thought to have been built with slave labor, modern research now suggests it was the work of highly skilled artisans. But how did they construct these monuments out of stones weighing more than two tons each without cranes, trucks, and power tools? And how could they have been designed so precisely without engineers or computers? UFO followers suggest some help from aliens, and it seems the heavens play a role with the pyramids configured in alignment with the stars in Orion's belt. Even more mysterious is what's inside. A chamber holds the mummified body of Khufu in a red granite sarcophagus weighing almost four tons, and a hall called the Great Void, which was just discovered in 2017, had a purpose that remains, like so much about the pyramid, a tantalizing mystery. Next we have another classic, Stonehenge in England. Of all the possible uses of Stonehenge, the iconic megalithic circle in southern England, festival grounds have not ranked high. And yet, recent studies on exhumed pig bones suggest people gathered from far away, this wasn't local pork, to perhaps party under the rocks. Some 4,600 years after ancient Britons built Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain, it's the mystery that continues to puzzle, amaze, and inspire popular culture and myth. Long before the first archaeologist's spade hit soil, Legends abounded of the Arthurian wizard Merlin plucked the stones from Ireland and recruiting giants to assemble Stonehenge. Invading Danes, occupying Romans, and Satan also have been credited as builders. Scientists now trace its beginnings to death, the site appearing to be a burial ground dating back perhaps as far as 8000 BCE. 
At first, it appears to have been little more than a ditch with simple posts. Then around 3100 BCE, the first stones arrived from quarries 180 miles away in modern-day Wales, perhaps moved there on wooden sledges or even carried to create the interior rocks of Stonehenge. By about 2400 BCE, much of what remains today emerged, including the 108-foot diameter circle of massive 25-ton stones that are 13 feet high and fitted with mortise and tenon joints usually found in carpentry. As for why the ancients went to all this trouble, researchers still disagree. Along with funeral purposes, Stonehenge seems to have astrological functions with alignments to the moon, sun, and certain stars. Whatever its function, nobody can look at this marvelous and mammoth monument and fail to be impressed. Next in Laos, we have the Plain of Jars. Let's see, if I just go like this, you can see how far it goes. In the valleys and foothills of the Laotian highlands stand thousands of massive stone jars, seemingly carved by the gods, surviving both 2,000 years of monsoonal rains and the relentless bombing by U.S. forces during the Vietnam War era. The vessels of the plain of jars are 3 feet to 10 feet high and weigh as much as 35 tons, mostly grouped in sets of three or more, only one of them with markings a bas-relief of a frog figure similar to those seen in ancient China. Otherwise, the jars are as blank as their history. Legend tells of the king of the giants, Kun Chung, who brewed rice wine in them to celebrate a battle victory, while Western researchers theorize they may have collected rainwater, which was boiled for purity and stored for thirsty caravan traders during the dry months. Recent studies suggest the jars were funerary urns based on the charred bones and human remains found in the nearby cave. Madeline Kalani, the first Westerner to study the jars 90 years ago, found glass beads, burnt teeth, and bone fragments inside the soil-filled jars. Certainly a cloud of death hangs over these fields, which are pockmarked by craters from the 262 million tons of American ordnance dropped here in the 1960s and 1970s, many of those bombs buried and still waiting to explode. And next we have Teotihuacan in Mexico. Dominating Mesoamerica for 1,000 years as the largest city in the Western Hemisphere at this time, Teotihuacan was a thriving metropolis with a main thoroughfare called Avenue of the Dead that was lined by pyramids and temples dedicated with human sacrifices. But by the time the Aztecs discovered it in the 1400s, it lay in ruins, having been abandoned for centuries. Little is known about the people who settled here around 200 BCE, but the city grew to more than 100,000 people, its glory represented by structures including the 213-foot-tall Pyramid of the Sun, the third largest pyramid on Earth. Scientists believe a drought caused food shortages that sparked dissent between the haves and have-nots. By the 8th century, Teotihuacan was, as a society was no more. So cool. Then we have some fabled lost cities, the first being Avalon. This idyllic island of grapevines and apple trees that grow like weeds comes from Arthurian legend and is where, as Geoffrey of Monmouth writes in 1136 CE, in the history of kings of Britain, the great sword Excalibur was forged. Tales tell of King Arthur recovering on his healthy isle from nasty battle wounds, and some say he lives there still, biding his time until he rides back to England to defeat her foes. Just where there might be has stirred imaginations for generations. Glastonbury, once an island-like place surrounded by marshes southwest of London near Bath, has long been associated with Avalon. During medieval times, local monks claimed to have discovered a coffin and leaden cross bearing the inscription, Here lies entombed the renowned King Arthur in the island of Avalon. And then of course we have Atlantis. Could the great philosopher Plato have imagined that some 2,400 years after he described an advanced civilization that sank into the sea, that we'd still be talking about Atlantis? 
Explorers scour the floors of the Earth's oceans for evidence of a great city suddenly submerged by a catastrophic earthquake or volcanic eruption. Scholars suggest there may be a nugget of truth to the tale. Perhaps it was the Greek island of Santorini that was destroyed by a volcanic eruption in 1600 BCE. Inspiration may have come from Athens's invasion of Sicily in the 5th century BCE. Or maybe Plato just made the whole thing up as an allegory. Next is Shangri-La. Tales of a lost Tibetan land of peace, love, and health tucked high in the Himalayas and are traced back as far as 1st century CE Indian text, but it wasn't until James Hilton's 1933 novel Lost Horizon and the subsequent Frank Capra movie that the fantasy of a mountain paradise gripped the collective psyche. It was Hilton who coined the name. For centuries, Europeans had sought out a land called Shambhala, but the vision remained the same, a sacred and remote land guarded by yetis, with streams whose waters give eternal life. As the search continues, some place it in mountainous Hunza Valley in Pakistan, or as Pimako in eastern Tibet, whose legendary and elusive waterfall was only found in 1998. And then there's El Dorado. The search for El Dorado has driven men to madness and death. 16th century Spanish explorers first heard of it in stories told by natives, of a Muisca ruler in the Andes who covered himself in gold dust from head to toe and tossed gold and jewels into a lake to appease an underwater god. The Spaniards found gold in the shallows of the lake. The Muisca were masters at gold production, but not the untold fortune. An expedition by English adventurer Sir Walter Raleigh ended in disaster when his son was killed in a battle with Spaniards in 1617. And here's some lost cities found. Here's Heraklion. In the early 2000s, divers off the coast of Egypt discovered statues, jewels, and temple ruins of this port city that appears throughout Greek mythology. It apparently sank into the sea about 2,200 years ago after an earthquake or tsunami. And Xanadu. Kublai Khan's Chinese capital was destroyed by Ming warriors in the 14th century, but its ruins seem to confirm the breathless accounts of Marco Polo, who returned from his travels in 1275, telling of a sprawling city of rivers and fountains protected by dragon statues with a massive palace and horses and wild animals. And Siguria. The 5th century Sri Lankan fortress with a legendary staircase through a lion's mouth was rediscovered in the 1800s. Excavation revealed the legs and paws of a lion flanking the entrance, over which loomed a lion's head. UNESCO has listed Siguria as the eighth wonder of the world. I think that's the end. Yep. That's the end of this chapter. So we'll continue this on another night. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night.